Welcome to the uh, 2010 National Ballooning Hall of Fame. And we have many distinguished guests and a few other people. And we have, we've had, we were even honored so much as having Mr. Kittinger's first um, book signing. That was pretty cool. And I hope you guys all let him sign away, sign away. And then uh, we'll have another one afterwards in case some of you were late and didn't get your done. And then Dennis and I will also share some of his time and we will sign our book in case you haven't got our book. And then if you do have our book and you want a personal message, we can do that too. But um, you need to take a look at it. It says Indianola, ballooning capital of Iowa, but it covers the whole gamut from 1783 to now. So, and it's all hot air. And we're all in a good place today. And we have, um, for you people who don't know me, I'm Becky Wigland, curator of this lovely establishment. And um, I hope you've had a chance to look at it. It doesn't usually look like this, but we wanted to make sure we had plenty of chairs and plenty of things for all you people. Anyway, um, Mr. Walters, but I don't, Walter, I don't even see him. Oh, here he is. He's not getting the back room. Anyway, um, this is Ken Walter. He is... Um, our representative from the BFA on our uh, museum board, and he's going to be the the big good part. <laughs> Thanks, Becky. Is this one working? It's not going to scream at me. Uh, I am Ken Walter. I am the on the BFA Board of Directors. I'm the Great Lakes representative, and I also currently serve as a secretary to the Board of Directors. Uh, I want to thank Becky and, and the museum for all the work that they've done here today to get this prepared. I'd also, we've got members of the Balloon Federation of America Board of Directors here. Uh, Troy, President Troy Bradley is right here. I know uh, Vice President Bill Hughes is here. Somewhere there he is. And uh, Treasurer Jim Thompson. And I'm, not, I'm not sure if, if Matt Fenster is here from the, from the north central region. I think I've got all the, the current board of directors. We also have uh, the, our most recent past president, Don Edwards. Don, Edward, Don Edwards is now the uh, executive director of the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. Um, and we also have from the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, Ray Bear. And from the National Balloon Museum Board of Directors, um, President Gary Rubel. I know there are a few other board members here, uh, Dennis Anderson, Kelly Shaw. Um, I'm not sure who else. I'm missing that's here. I didn't see everybody. Nancy Griffith, there she is. Did I get everybody that's from the, the museum board? Oh, great. Oh, Dennis Nicholson. Sorry about that, Dennis. Um, and, and also, I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame Selection Committee um, for the work that they put in every year um, coming up with the nominations and the selections for the Hall of Fame. Our first inductee this afternoon is Tom Shepard. Tom has an extensive record in the leadership role of the Boone Federation of America. He's a life member of the BFA. He served as past president of the, of the BFA and as the chairman of the BFA competition division, <clears throat> of the competition division rules committee, I'm sorry. He's considered to be the, fa the father of modern day balloon competition in the United States and has been a leader and a participant in many international ballooning competition events as well. He is also the re recipient of countless ballooning awards. I've known Tom since I was introduced to ballooning in 1988, I think it was. Um, he comes from my home state of Wisconsin, or that's at least where he's lived when I met him. Uh, and uh, he's just been a wonderful mentor to many, many Wisconsin pilots and pilots across the country when it comes to balloon competition. Um, today introducing Tom is his close friend, friend and business partner, Debbie Spath. Uh, Debbie's also a ballooning pioneer in her own right. She's been an active balloonist since 1974 in balloon competitions, including seven times as the assistant event director for the World Championships. 
She's also served as a CIA director, uh, the CIA Secretary General for seven years, and the first American to serve in this capacity, and the first woman on the CIA Bureau. Uh, those of you that are very familiar with competitive ballooning, from 1975 until just a few years ago, uh, Tom and Debbie were known as the Shepherd Spaith team organizers in many balloon events. From the first balloon event in West Bend, Wisconsin, over 24, and, over, and for 24 years at the Wisconsin Dells, national and world competitions and championships. Tom and, Tom and Debbie have worked together at hundreds of events over 30 plus years. It's my pleasure to introduce Debbie Spaith. All right, Becky didn't use an official one, so. All right, now, we, now we're officially starting. All right, so as she said, that was the official start of lots of briefings over many years. Okay, it was my privilege, to, whoa, to get composed first. What a nice introduction, thank you, Kim. All right, to share with you the life experiences and ballooning history that brought Tom Shepard to this board in here. Oh, God, I'm, okay, all right. So, Thomas Albert Francis Shepard was born in 1929, as his granddaughter said a very long time ago in Sidmonton, England, overlooking Watership Down. And Tom did not name the Watership Down event. Someone else did, but it's funny how that all falls together. Those little seven, seven ways that things are connected, I think. On Tom's 10th birthday, World War II began in Europe. And while it was a time of rationing and bomb shelters for school kids, it was also the beginning of Tom's interest in aviation. Tom joined the Air Cadets, and he was able to spend time on the Greenham, Air Com Greenham Common Air Base, close to his home. Now, if you wear that uniform, you also get to fly with the pilots who are doing their training. So those pilots were in um, C-47s and gliders. So Tom got a chance to go up and do those training flights. Pretty cool for a kid of a young age. Well, he also heard General Eisenhower give his farewell speech to the pilots as they left on D-Day. So he credits that with his, his interest in aviation. By the time Tom was 18, if you look over here, you see the helmet that he wore when he was doing his um, flying in the British Royal Navy Fleet Air Arm. Got it right. Tom received his ratings at that time in gliders and fixed wing. And after an aviation accident, he brought about his medical discharge from the Fleet Air Arm. And he used that aeronautical knowledge. And he decided to get it, or applied and got a job as a position, a position as a technical writer for an aviation company. A series of job changes took Tom from England to Canada to Chicago and eventually the big metropolis of West Bend, Wisconsin. So it was in West Bend that Tom and met a group of men who were looking for a fourth partner for their balloon event, or their balloon, to buy a balloon. So that group was Marine Aeronauts. And like this room, it was quite a mixture of personalities and people. That's what, what their common interest was, they all wanted to fly balloons. So the Marine Aeronauts did a lot of research and they decided that, I'm sure Tom led that, he was more the uh, He's the kind of guy that, if you know, as many of you in this room know, Tom is a bit of a detailed person. So this was the days when Raven and Balloon Works and Picard and Semco were there, so they decided to buy a Balloon Works. But another thing happened. By making that decision, they were excluded from a balloon event that was not far from home. Well, that didn't sit well with the big guy. So they decided that they, Marine Aeronauts would organize an event in West Bend, Wisconsin. I'll tell you, they picked February 28th. <laughs> you all understand what that means in Wisconsin. It is cold and there's snow on the ground and the roads are slippery. And if you were here yesterday and heard Don Kaplan speak, a little later on when Tom came up and talked to him, Don says, I remember driving on slippery roads and Nikki and I trying to get those balloons inflated in a field that was full of snow. And yep, that was the first event we had in Wisconsin. For, and all, everybody was invited. Harold Graves was there and Harold met Tom because Harold wanted to know how to land a balloon works balloon. He, as instructor, never let him land his balloon while he was giving him training. He was only able to fly it. True story, right, Harold? <laughs> the rest of the story is that Tom Shepard also, put, while Tom was flying, they put the balloon into a tree, a brand new balloon, slid it from top to bottom. Tom sewed it up, Harold, and that balloon flew to that, for the rest of its life with that perfect um, stitch in there because Tom was also a repairman. <laughs> so anyway, back to the balloon event. So this... So now we have a balloon event in Wisconsin, and it was, the decision was made to invite everybody in the area. So Steve Newlander and um, 
Paul Wozner had just crossed Lake Michigan in a balloon and set that. They were the first to do that. So they were invited, and Paul accepted the invitation and flew in the event in Wisconsin. We had Don and Nikki Kaplan there. They were there with the Unicorn Balloon. We had lots of other pilots that are no longer flying um, actively, but we did have the Blounts, Doug, Doug and Alan were there. And um, let's see, we had Tucker Comstock and Bruce Comstock were there. You probably recognize those names. Tucker was the scoring officer and Bruce was flying. And that event was also a little bit of history for ballooning because that was the first event where pilots had to fly. They started the competition ranking system for qualifying for the nationals. Prior to that, there hadn't been enough pilots to make it necessary, but now there were, ballooning was growing, so they needed more, um, they needed somebody to, they needed a way to um, have people qualify. So that event became the first event to qualify people for the national championships. And that was the first time they used the P minus N plus 0.5 divided by P times 1,000 formula, which I learned <laughs> because I started working for Tom at that time. And he, he said, well, here, you might want to do this if you have a little free time. So I learned the formula, and we kept it in the red book. The red book was every person's scoring formula. And I'll tell you, I love to do that book, but I really like the people who flew four tasks better than the ones who flew 15, and they had to recalculate them all. It was before computers, so it was all on the calculator and in your head. So that, that system got Tom, Tom's, that event started Tom on a road to balloon meisters. Everywhere that, um, around the Midwest, if you went to a multitude of events, he was in Pinckney, Michigan, he was down in Indiana, he was over in Iowa and Wisconsin, and he was doing events. And he was invited to be on the BFA events committee with people with BFA history like Carl Steffen, one of last year's inductees, Tucker Comstock, Dave Schaefer, and Tom served as a member and eventually chairman from 74 until 83. So Tom's tenure also took him, it was a time of change in ballooning. Computers were of age, so Tom made sure that we got, he brought Sharon up to speed in, in the BFA office at one time and got the computer, um, what the computer was for the scoring, event scoring group, the BFA office got one too. For those of you who want to feel really aged, the kids won't understand this, but there were eight and a half inch discs. <laughs> now we have little sticks, right? And Tom um, developed the BFA scoring formula um, with a gentleman from West Bend. They developed the criteria for the scoring formula for teams as well as ranking system for the um, event, the weekend events and, and the nationals. And Tom is still considered an expert on comp competition rules and is often asked questions and, um, about scoring formula and scoring and established things. And Tom was also on the team credited with the Eclipse software that's used at a lot of international events where we do um, teams and, and uh, the, the World Grand Prix that Joe knows all about, that, where's Joe, I lost Joe, that uh, we had a few, for a number of years. One of the other things was that Tom encouraged pilots to give back to competition. By, they set up a program during Tom's tenure that the director for the U.S. Nationals, if he had been on the list of people qualified to go to the Worlds in a previous Nationals, that spot was, he was given a spot on there. Long as we had more than the minimum three, the fourth spot was given to the person who was the event director so that we could mo have more of the competition pilots encouraged to be directors and keep that flow going. For the observers, Marsha's here, so Marsha knows all about um, observers. Tom brought the observer program to the United States. He went, he went to the 77 worlds and decided he really liked that program. He was an observer there. We even found his, his, mem his uh, ID card when we were looking for things for today. So Tom was an observer and came back to, this was in September, and he came back and he said to us, well, we're going to have observers at Wisconsin Dells in 1978 because two months later at the Nationals when I'm event director, we're going to be having observers in Indianola. So a book was put together. Tom and I edited it. We, I learned all about observers, and we trained all kinds of people to be observers. We had nursing students. <laughs> We had um, ski, ski instruct, or ski club. Jim and Georgine from Wisconsin remember that. They were ski club members, and that's how their club got involved. <sighs> Excuse me. And we also had lots of volunteers and strangers. I remember being on the steps of Indianola at the college, and there were people standing there. I'd say, wouldn't you like to be involved in ballooning? We are looking for people who want to get up tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock and be out here to be an observer. And they'd say yes, and they wouldn't show up in the morning. I can't understand why. <laughs> Just no dedication, you know. But we had a lot. The, the core of the Observer Program grew over the years. Um, 
Tom was involved in putting the program together where they had the ABC for Observer's Advancement, and we were both involved in those programs and for the international as well. And when, the, when it became a, a obvi obvious a few years back that the observers were being replaced by GPSs, Tom was presented with a beautiful trophy, which is on display in the case here, from the observers thanking him for that. Now, those of you that know Tom know that he's always lived life his own. As you know, he was never one to shy away from a controversial subject. But he set goals and made them happen, and he fought for the good of the sport. But along the way, he's been willing to sh share his knowledge and his expertise. For pilots, that included new tasks and how to keep it interesting. If pilots brought a new task, um, Al Nels came up with an idea for the land run task. So that was put together, and Al's task became some that, that was tried out at the Dells and moved on to international competition. For observers, encouraging them to be more professional, and doing the ABC program of, of advancement. And officials, several times we had classes for officials, teaching them what comes second nature to us, they want to know, ask them lots of questions. So we had a lot of people who attended those as well. Even in gas ballooning, Tom set a new standard. He was a event director in the 1990s in uh, Tyndall, South Dakota. We go to a lot of exotic places for ballooning, don't we? We all do. So he was the event director, and Joe Starkbaum credited Tom with setting new tasks and a new style. And the pilots liked those changes and incorporated those taking the best out of the, the hot air competition that worked for gas and putting those two together and having a, a new way, a, a more, more interesting way for pilots in, in future gas championships. In the international scope, we had in 19, for the 1989 Worlds, the Japanese were awarded the um, World Championships. And in 86, we had a phone call from a gentleman named Masashi Kakuda. And he said, I'd like to come and visit with you. So he came to West Bend and we all sat down to dinner and he said, I'd like to learn your style of balloon meister. I really, I want to be, I'm going to be the event director for Japan, and I'd like to learn. So for three years, Masashi and a team of Japanese, we were all kids then, came to Battle Creek and learned all about um, the way that Tom's team did event scoring and, and observing and all the events. So it was a great way. Those friendships still last to today. Which kind of brings me to a, a little bit of, some of it I've covered before, but it reminds me of a book that I read a few years ago called The Five People You Meet in Heaven. The premise of the book is that there's five people at least that in your life that you have, you've, not, you've touched their lives but you didn't know it. Well, I think it's always nice to know that before you're there. I want a second chance at seeing them. I'd like to meet them the first time through. So Masashi, for example, and his son. His son now is involved in ballooning, and we've been in, uh, encouraging him as well. From, he was in West Bend to visit, saw where his dad flew, and is now a pilot himself. Gary Britton. Gary, Gary, was, uh, Gary knew Tom through aviation out of the West Bend Airport. They both flew airplanes. So Gary was invited to become a pilot with the Marine Aeronaut Group, and he's still involved today. Well, we just talked about Harold and how lucky he is to have his balloon fixed by Tom Shepard immediately after flights. And Dennis and Sharon, they've been our long friends. Sharon Ripperger in the office, and Denny. And of course, my family. My four-year-old brother grew up ballooning and ordering shrimp cocktails when he was four years old because he was used to eating in restaurants that we went to for ballooning. <laughs> and as my mother said, the child knows what he likes to eat. Uh, during his ballooning career, Tom served as BFA president and board member, CIA delegate for the United States, event director for World Hot Air, Gas, and Rosie Air Championships, event director at the U.S. and Canadian Nationals, event director at Fiesta events, including the Kodak Balloon Fest, where we did three cities in two weeks, the Olympics in Calgary and Lake Placid. He's been jury president at national and international events. He was a designated examiner for the FAA for 10 years. He's been a repairman for 30 years for balloons and a competitive pilot winning third place once at an event in Aurora, Illinois. Tom has been awarded the BFA President's Awards multiple times. He was awarded the Shields Trogger twice, once for contribution to ballooning and once for exemplary service to the BFA. In, in 2008, Tom was awarded the Icarus Award, the highest award by the Japanese Balloon Federation. And I forget the year, but Tom was also awarded the Joan Martin Award, which is the highest award by the Canadian Balloon Association. Tom received the Al Desmond Award for contribution to balloon competition, 
the FAI Montgolfier Diploma for Contribution to International Ballooning, the Wisconsin Balloon Group Golden Whistle Award. Thank you, Becky, for bringing that up. And I, I got a, when Tom was being awarded this and word got out, got a few tributes from people. And Masashi, um, Masashi, Sabu Ishioshi, the Japanese delegate that many of you know from gas ballooning in different places, he wrote, you are the greatest championship director, Tom. I won't read you the whole thing, but he wrote a very nice letter ahead of that. And uh, Kazuya, who was one of the people that we, but came to um, Battle Creek, talked about Tom's stern attitude and how he learned a lot from that in his first flight in 1985 World Championships and how, what a great influence that was on Masashi. And Alan Zielinski wrote, you always one of my three wise men. <laughs> now this page, I would explain, but I'll have to get a translation because the Japanese crew kids sent this over and uh, they sent uh, best wishes was the top of the heading, so that was nice. And the Canadians wrote back and said, Tom, thank you for helping us grow up into ballooning. Now, as I told Tom, today he is truly a treasure. Thank you very much. Those that haven't seen it, it's already up over here. Tom Black. Do you do the presentation now or after Tom's? I think we should do it now. Tom, it's my distinct honor and pleasure to induct you into the U.S. National Ballooning Hall of Fame. Congratulations. <laughs> to get through what I wrote here. <laughs> I'm very honored to be here today, to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. When I was a boy, I was not aware that in 1904, the Reverend John Bacon had developed and patented a hot air balloon in a small village just two miles from where I grew up. Uh, now, many years later, I've been very fortunate to have been involved in the early days of modern hot air ballooning. There are, of course, many people I would like to thank who are invaluable to helping me reach this honor. First, my family for many weekends and weeks I was ballooning and many times they would help at events as well. My business partner and friend, Debbie Spath, who worked with me almost the whole time I have been in ballooning. Many of the things that I have accomplished could not have been done without her. Karen Rippiger for assistance during my presidency and after. The BFA and CIA committee members I've worked with over the years. Chuck Thomas, who some of you will know, who helped me out of the BFA's problems with the IRS when I became president. Also for his work in getting the BFA our 501c3. When you get old, this is harder to do. Also, all the many staff, observers, and 
pilots who have supported me over the years at more than the hundred events that I have directed. I have thoroughly enjoyed the 37 years that I have been involved with ballooning in the BFA. And I thank you very much for this honor. Thank you. Can open the floor for a little while if anyone has some stories or anything they want to share about Tom. I know that there's people in this room that have known Tom for a long time, and there's lots of lots of stories out there. If anyone's got anything, <clears throat> anyone? Oh, come on! As long as Tom's been in ballooning, nobody's got anything to share. <laughs> David Rapp. In 1986, I helped do something very minor when he was the president of the BFA, and he awarded me the director's, the president's award from the BFA. And that was the impetus that I needed to continue in ballooning and uh, do what I've done. And so I want to thank Tom. Thank you for that award. I know you've forgotten about it, but it meant an awful lot to me. Thank you. Very good.